Hi, and welcome to the Montana Bison Hunt Orientation. My name is Mel Frost, and I'm the Regional Information and Education Manager for Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks based in Bozeman. I'd like to say congratulations first on obtaining a bison hunt permit. They were a hot commodity, and they were pretty long odds, so congratulations. So during this orientation today, we're going to cover a little bit about bison natural history and bison management in North America. And we're also going to talk a little bit about some of the things that you'll need to know to successfully hunt bison here in Montana. We're going to talk a little bit now about bison natural history. Very briefly, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but uh, just to give you a little bit of context for the animal that you're, you're going to be hunting this season. Bison are the largest of the North American land mammals and an enduring and incredible symbol of the, Amer the American West. They're very gregarious animals and they spend most of their time in herds. The cows, the subadults, and the calves spend most of the year together, while the bulls often are solitary or in small groups for most of the year, with the exception of breeding season in the summertime. The lifespan of a bison is about 18 to 20 years, and winter kill is the primary mortality factor for bison in Yellowstone. Bison are migratory animals that change locations throughout the year in response to seasonal weather changes and forage availability. As winter weather progresses, bison move from the higher elevations in Yellowstone to the lower elevation valley bottoms in Montana, which gives you the opportunity to hunt bison. Bison have a rich history in North America. There were an estimated 25 to 60 million bison across the Great Plains. There are stories from the mid-1800s of great black clouds of bison as far as the eye could see across the plains. But market hunting caused a severe decline in bison. An estimated 375,000 were harvested annually until 1883 when the northern herds were finally destroyed. Interestingly, William Hornaday of the Smithsonian Institute produced this map showing the shrinking range of the American bison. It's fascinating to note that bison once ranged from California to New York and Mexico to the northern territories of Canada. So to focus in on Yellowstone National Park, the Yellowstone bison population had dwindled to about 50 animals by the early 1900s. Park managers at the time felt that a valuable wildlife resource in Yellowstone had almost been lost and so begun restoration efforts in 1902 to supplement the remaining population with bison from private herds in Montana and Texas. Once that happened, bison were ranched in Yellowstone at the Lamar Buffalo Ranch, at times with cattle. Ironically, it is believed that bison in Yellowstone contracted the disease brucellosis from these cattle. Brucellosis was first diagnosed in bison at Lamar in 1917. Once these restoration efforts began, bison were intensively managed in Yellowstone for many years using a variety of tools, including captivity, live removals, regulated hunts, direct reductions, feeding, and herding. However, in 1967, the park adopted the policy of natural regulation and intensive management of bison ended. Because of their propensity to migrate out of Yellowstone and into Montana, and because of the threat of brucellosis to the livestock industry, an interagency bison management plan, which took 10 years to develop, was implemented in 2000. The interagency bison management plan has two main goals. The first is to maintain a wild, free-ranging population of bison. The second is to address the risk of brucellosis transmission to protect the economic interest and viability of the livestock industry in Montana. The goals are somewhat in conflict, and it's a delicate balance of implementing the plan and achieving both goals. To add an additional layer of complexity, there are five state and federal agencies with different missions and mandates that work together to implement the plan. They are the National Park Service, Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, the U.S. Forest Service, Montana Department of Livestock, and Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Despite these complexities, we've been managing bison under the plan since 2000, and it's going fairly well. I'd like to offer just a few additional thoughts about bison management today. There is no shortage of wild bison in Yellowstone or North America. Under the bison plan in Yellowstone, the population threshold is 3,000 animals. The population is incredibly robust. In addition to the Yellowstone population, wild bison are also found in Wind Cave, South Dakota, the National Bison Range in Montana, Henry's Mountains in Utah, Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming, and Wood Buffalo National Park in Alberta, Canada. 
By law, the state of Montana has the responsibility to manage bison as we do other wildlife. And we're not alone. Several other western states also conduct annual bison hunts without controversy, including Alaska, Arizona, South Dakota, Utah, and Wyoming. Many of you may remember past bison hunts that happened between 1985 and 1990. Hunters killed 670 bison during that time. The hunt was extremely controversial and was halted by the 1991 legislature due to significant public outcry and negative media attention. It's important to note that these hunts were very different from today's, which was specifically developed to address past issues that drew criticism and create a new bison hunt that more closely mirrors other big game hunts here in the state. In response to requests for additional tools to manage bison, legislation was passed in 2003 authorizing a new Montana bison hunt. The goal of that legislation was to create a fair chase hunt of bison in Montana. This new bison hunt began in 2005 with a hunter success rate of 100 percent. Since 2005, hunter success has been variable based on weather conditions and bison migrations. I'd like to make an important point here. This is the hunt of a migratory species. Your permit is not a guarantee that you will shoot a bison. Uh, the availability of bison outside of the park is dependent on factors such as weather, forage availability, and migratory patterns. As all of you know, uh, sportsmen and women have played a primary role in the restoration and conservation of big game species across North America and in Montana. And one of the reasons that we're excited about this hunt is that it provides you with the opportunity to be invested in the species directly. And uh, we also feel that hunters, when they have a sense of ownership in the species, they can help us with restoring that species. And bison is definitely a species in Montana that uh, we, are, we have a long-term vision of res restoring here in North America. I'd like to talk now about some specific regulations for the bison hunt. There are two hunting districts. Hunt District 385, which is north of Yellowstone near Gardner, and Hunt District 395, which is west of Yellowstone near the town of West Yellowstone. There are three hunt time periods in each district. November 15 through December 31, January 1 through January 22, January 23rd through February 15. The first time period is a little bit longer than the others because the start of the migration varies from year to year and we want to give the first time period hunters an equal opportunity to pursue a bison. There are 44 either sex permits and up to an additional 100 cow-calf permits, but only if bison migrate out of Yellowstone in numbers that will accommodate that level of hunting. We're offering standard and liberal seasons to attempt to address circumstances such as those that happened in past years with limited migrations, but we want to be able to respond if there are larger bison migrations. In addition, each of Montana's eight Native American tribes will receive two permits. Another couple of details you should know. It's your responsibility to check your permit for your hunting district and time period and whether or not you have an either sex or a cow-calf permit. Hunting is permitted in areas outside of Yellowstone National Park where bison may be found across about 460,000 acres, although bison primarily use about 60,000 of those acres. We won't be hazing during the hunt unless it is required under the terms of the Interagency Bison Management Plan. And lastly, you are responsible for knowing and adhering to all of the bison hunt regulations, as well as the general rules found in the deer, elk, and antelope regulations. We're not going to cover all of those in this orientation, so please familiarize yourself with them. I just want to point out to you the two different bison hunt areas. This is 385, Hunting District 385. Bison are most likely to be found in this Hunt District 385 in the Eagle Creek area here. It's about uh, 26,000 acres of land. They possibly could be in this Absaroka Beartooth Wilderness area. The second area is Hunting District 395 right here, west of the park. Now again, Bison are most likely going to be found here in the West Yellowstone Basin, in the Duck Creek and the Horse Butte area right here. Um, there may be some bison in the Cabin Creek Monument Mountain area, but again, it's not likely. So just want to let you know that those are the two areas in each of the hunting districts where bison are most likely going to be found. There is no hunting within the city limits of Gardner and West Yellowstone. You are expected to familiarize yourself with the boundaries of those cities and not to hunt within the boundaries of those cities. Um, there's also no hunting on the west side, that's Hunt District 395, within the fence boundary of the Yellowstone Airport. In Hunting District 395, there is a closure area on Horse Butte Peninsula from December 1st to August 15th on National Forest System lands to protect nesting eagles.
There is a hunting area closure in Hunting District 385. It runs along Highway 89 northwest of Gardner. It is also a posted boundary out in the field. Uh, there's also, in addition to this uh, closure above Highway 89, you can't shoot within 100 yards of Highway 191 and Highway 287, and those are both on the west side of the park, and again, they're on your detailed maps. There is no hunting within the boundaries of Yellowstone National Park, so you need to be aware, especially if you're hunting right along the boundary, that if you shoot an animal and it doesn't go down right away, you cannot retrieve that animal if it retreats into the park. In addition, if you shoot an animal with an ear tag or a radio collar, please turn those in to us. And then lastly, as with every other big game hunt in Montana, you have to ask permission on private land. There are some subdivisions, particularly within the West Yellowstone Hunting District, that don't allow bison hunting. We ask that you be respectful of these residents' wishes. Firearms and ammunition. Um, the only means of taking a bison uh, that is allowed during this hunt is a centerfire rifle. Uh, there's no muzzle loaders allowed, no archery equipment, and you are required to use 150 grain or larger bullet. Um, we ask that you do this. Um, we are hoping for quick and clean kills. Per the authorizing legislation, bison may be shot on foot or horseback only. You can use snow machines or all-terrain vehicles for retrieval and transport, but please check with the appropriate land management agency before you do so. In the event that we have to haze, um, if bison are going to a place that they're not allowed to under the interagency bison management plan, we will give you a notice of closure. We will try to contact you. We cannot, according to the legislation, have hunters and management actions going on in the field at the same time. And, as with any other firearms hunt in Montana, hunters are required to wear a minimum of 400 square inches of hunter orange above the waist and visible at all times. And finally, it may seem obvious, but only the permitted hunter is allowed to shoot a bison. Loan and transfer of a license is illegal, and we will be enforcing that. Equipment, tools, and support. The hunting of bison is unlike anything that you've experienced um, in terms of big game hunting in Montana. To put it into perspective, an adult bull bison can weigh up to 2,000 pounds. An average bull elk is about 700 pounds, so we're talking about uh, three times the size of a bull elk. So some of the recommended tools and equipment, if you plan to field dress your own, we would recommend having many sharp knives, so you bring a bunch of those with you and you also bring a sharpening system. Um, the bison's hide is very thick and apparently it dulls knives uh, very quickly. We also suggest a bone, meat saw, and an axe, and then a sturdy rope as well as a large plastic tarp or tarps. Um, block and tackle may uh, be helpful, and a winch, uh, as well as a sled or a game cart. Based on our experience from past hunts, we recommend that you bring many fit friends to help you in the field with field dressing and retrieval. We recommend at least five very fit friends who can help you. In addition, perhaps you don't want to take on this task. You may want to consider hiring an outfitter to help with field dressing and retrieval. But bear in mind, if you're hunting on Gallatin National Forest lands, the outfitter needs to be permitted on those lands. Hi, I'm Sam Shepard. I'm the Warden Captain for Fish, Wildlife and Parks here in Region 3. I'd like to take a couple minutes to pass on some information to you that we've found that hopefully will be helpful to you during your bison hunt this fall. What we'd like to see is a respect for the animal. And by that I mean a quick, clean, humane kill. And your best chance of success for that is to sight your rifle in for 100 yards and know what it's going to do at both 50 yards, 75 yards, 100 yards. You're going to have a fairly close shot at these animals. Um, you're going to have all the time you need in the world to set up, get a good rest, make sure everything's right, that the angle of the animal's right, and it's pretty critical. There's two shots that we recommend on hunting a bison. And the first one is the head shot, which would be from ear to ear, or the base of the horn angling slightly forward into the brain case. And that's what I mean when I talk about that the angle is so critical and for you to have a good rest and take your time. You're talking about an area of about this big that you have to put that bullet in. The second preferred shot that we would suggest is the heart shot. It's a little different than you'd find with a deer or an elk. Because of the composition of a bison's body, you have the large hump that is also there, and that's mostly bone and gristle. So the heart actually sits lower in the chest cavity, right behind the elbow, fairly low on the chest of a bison. 
with either of these shots that you take, the choice will be up to you. But in both instances, you need to be prepared for a follow-up shot to make sure that that animal is put down in the most quickly, cleanly, and humane fashion. Also be aware that even though a bison is a massive animal, you still can shoot through this animal, and you need to be sure of what's beyond your target and that you have a safe backstop. The next thing I'd like to talk to you about is the difference between bulls, cows, and cats. Some of you will have either sex permits, which will entitle you to shoot any bison you see. The rest will have either a cow-calf permit. Now, we found it's really important to be able to distinguish the difference. When you come, you will have been given some drawings and some information that helps you tell the difference between a bull, a cow, and a calf. I also suggest that you do some research on your own, either at the library or on the internet, or take a trip to Yellowstone before your hunt and actually look at some bison on the landscape and get to where you can tell the difference. What we found is people have the most difficult time telling the difference between young bulls and cows and calves in that two to three year old thing. Generally speaking, bull groups or bachelor groups migrate out of the park first into Montana. So if you see a bison that's off by itself and you have a cow-calf permit, you're going to need to look pretty close because what we found is most of the time those are single bulls. The cows and calves will come in groups later and young calves will tend to stay with their mothers up to 18 months to the first two years of their life. And that's a pretty good indication if you see groups of cows and calves that that's what's there. There could be a bull mixed in with those, but once you get a chance to see a bunch of them and you have all the time in the world again, that's what we'd like you to do is take the time just like anything else. It's your responsibility to make sure you know what you're shooting at and what it is you're going to harvest. Remember, once you've pulled the trigger, you can't bring that bullet back. We recommend that you have a spotter in the field when you make your shot. If it's necessary for you to shoot again, that person can help you clearly identify which is your target animal. If you're shooting into a herd of bison, you may want to wait for a single animal to move off so that you do have a clear shot. If you do accidentally wound a bison and don't kill it immediately, it is your responsibility to do everything that you can to kill that animal. If you do accidentally kill two bison, please field dress both animals and immediately call Tipmont, or you can call the regional office in Bozeman during the weekdays. Those numbers are in your handouts. So hunter safety, we're just going to cover a couple of uh, things. Bison are extremely large animals, as you know, and uh, they can also move very quickly. Um, it doesn't appear that way sometimes when they're grazing and they seem so docile out there in the field, but they can be very unpredictable. They can run uh, speeds of up to 30 miles an hour, and a wounded bison, one that you have shot, um, can be extremely dangerous. It's important to remain alert and aware in the field at all times. It's another value of having a spotter with you. Something that we saw last year, um, something that we were aware of last year and that we saw, um, our experience showed us last year that bull bison that are in groups may become curious and even aggressive when another animal is wounded and down on the ground or is in fact has been killed. Um, we saw bison that milled around a wounded or a dead animal, um, perhaps they even were kicking at this animal and pawing at the ground, they became aggressive and in that instance it's uh, it would be uh, wise of you to give them some time to disperse. Um, you don't have to field dress immediately. It is okay for you to just give them some time to um, do what they're going to do. This is an instinctual response and to let them sort of work through that and then move along. Now you may choose to do some whooping or you know sort of waving your hands, that sort of thing to, to get them to move off, but use caution when you're doing that. Um, as I said, bison are large. They can be very fast. They can be very unpredictable and it can be be dangerous for you. Um, I will just point out um, there's um, some, some indications that bison give you um, when they are about to do something. Um, this uh, drawing here shows the, the four um, sort of common tail positions of a bison. When the tail is down and very close to the animal, that is a, a, a grazing and peaceful bison. There's not much need to worry about them. Uh, when the tail is raised to uh, about the horizontal line, um, that's a curious bison, some, a bison that's interested in something, it could be you, 
Um, it could be another bison. Now, when the tail sort of raises up above uh, the horizontal line just a bit, that's a bison that's gotten a bit excited for some reason. Um, it may be unclear to you. Maybe it was you in your close proximity. Um, but it's, it's start, a time to start thinking about moving away from that bison. Now, if the tail is fully raised um, in a vertical position, that is a, a, an angry bison, or as uh, this quote says, there's only two reasons why a buffalo raises his tail. The first is to charge, and the second is to discharge. So um, some other behaviors that might go along with this tail raised, if they're about to charge you as the head is down low, they might be pawing the ground, things like that. Um, if that starts to happen, you need to back away from that situation. We need to talk about a disease called brucellosis, which about 50% of Yellowstone bison have been exposed to. Now that doesn't mean that they have the disease, but it does mean they've developed antibodies to it in their system. We recommend that you bring an entire box of gloves and remember the following. Always assume that every bison is potentially infected with brucellosis. Always wear protective gloves when you're handling the carcass and the viscera. Avoid direct contact with the reproductive tract and the milk. Avoid touching your eyes, your nose, and your mouth until you've had a chance to wash thoroughly. If you have open sores or cuts, especially on your hands, take extra precautions. And discard the organ meats and cook all of the meat that you're going to consume thoroughly. It is unlawful to possess or transport the fetus or reproductive tissues of a bison away from the kill site. This shall not include specifically minimized tissues naturally attached to the carcass or a portion of the carcass as necessary for evidence of sex as follows. Male, head with horns or penis. Female, head with horns or vulva. <laughs> Now you've successfully shot your bison and it's on the ground and you've had time to let the other bison move away from it. Now comes the work and believe me it's a lot of work. For most of you or anyone that ends up hunting and successfully killing a bison this will be the largest game animal you ever have to deal with in the field as far as field dressing. Now field dressing it is very similar to a moose or an elk except for on a much more massive scale. Now Mel's already talked to you about all the equipment and things you are going to need, but remember to bring plenty of sharp knives and plenty of help. You're going to want to get the guts out of this animal as soon as possible. Okay, and you're going to want to open him all the way up to the windpipe and make sure the windpipe is removed. That can be done without ruining the cape if you do it right in case you're going to have your bison mounted. The important thing is to get the animal opened up so that air can get to it. And you do that in several different ways. On the back main hams, or hindquarters of the animal, you want to separate those off and get those opened up and skin them to get air to all parts of the quarters. The other thing you'll want to do is open that up all the way down along the femur all the way to the bone and that exposes the bone and that will prevent bone souring of this animal. You want to pay particular attention on the front quarters to the hump area. It's a very massive area of gristle like we talked about before and hide and you want to open that up and throw those front shoulders back. So you slice down through the scapula, along the rib cage, and open and lay those back out. And you do that first before you start packing your meat out so that you can have that meat cooling while you're packing it. Because they're so large and their hide so thick, you run the risk of wasting meat if you're not careful, if you take too long. Montana does have a waste of game statute, and we will enforce it. Now remember, just like with any other hunt you're on, if you encounter a check station on the way home, you're required by Montana law to stop. It may or may not be open, the one right outside of Gardner, but it doesn't matter if it's in Gardner or if it's in Billings or Missoula, you still have to stop at the check station. As you know, bison hunting in Montana is extremely controversial, highly emotional, and very heavily scrutinized, much more so than other big game hunts in Montana. You are an ambassador for all hunters. How you conduct yourself during your hunt will set an example for everyone to see across the state, the nation, and the world. Our goal is to provide you with a season structure that allows you the best possible chance of success. That success is the opportunity for you to hunt bison in a fair chase manner with a minimum amount of conflict. As we hunt for more years under this new structure, we're seeing less and less attention, but the hunt is not yet just like any other big game hunt in Montana. Bison are an American icon 
that are deeply revered and respected by all kinds of people, hunters and other wildlife enthusiasts alike. Not everyone agrees on how they're managed. There are going to be people out in the field documenting your hunt. One group in particular that will be out in the field documenting is Buffalo Field Campaign. They have a legitimate right to be out in the field. We ask that you be tolerant and not engage in confrontation. When others are nearby or in the distance, be especially aware of where you're pointing your firearm. All of your training and hunting experience may suggest to you that your firearm is pointed in a truly safe direction, but others may perceive it differently and feel threatened. Above all, be aware that you may encounter protesters at any time before, during, or after the shot. After a shot is made, some people may become very emotional. During the first year of the hunt, it received considerable local, regional, national, and international media attention. That attention was significantly lower last year. That trend should continue, and we're not likely to see too much media attention. That said, reporters may be around and may contact you for comment or ask to accompany you on your hunt. Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks and most hunters understand that a hunt is often a solitary and a personal experience or one that is shared with just a few friends or family members. While these experiences and emotions are part of Montana's hunting heritage, they are by definition individual and private. The decision to interact with the media is up to you. If you don't want to interact, plan accordingly. Hunt away from roads and other access points. You may also want to hunt on private land where access is limited. Bear in mind that your name and hometown are a matter of public record and so the media and others may be able to find you. Please note that we won't give out any other personal information about you. There are Native American tribes that have reserved treaty rights to hunt bison in Montana. These are legal hunting rights and we want you to be aware that these tribes will be out during your hunt and hunting as well. Please bear in mind, for the most part, tribal treaty hunters will follow their own tribe's rules and regulations, however state regulations will apply in cases of public safety and bison conservation. Another thing we need to talk about is situations you may find yourself on the mountain or on the hill here when you're hunting as far as hunter harassment. Now Montana does have a hunter harassment law, but what I'd like to do is explain to you what it is and what it is not. There will be other people in the field here. Not everybody necessarily agrees on the role of hunting and bison management. There will be people here like the Buffalo Field Campaign who, as Mel has told you, is a Buffalo advocacy group that will be documenting your hunt. Your hunt's probably most likely going to take place on national forest ground and anyone has a right to be here. They have a right to document your hunt. They have not shown in the past they would interfere with your hunt. The fact that they're standing next to you wanting to engage you in conversation is not hunter harassment. You can choose to talk to them, you can choose not to. If they want to film your hunt they have a right to do so. That's what hunter harassment is not. Some of the things that do constitute hunter harassment under Montana law are interfering with your ability to take the animal. Such things as placing yourself between a hunter and the animal would be hunter harassment. Chasing an animal away from in front of a hunter would be hunter harassment. Yelling or screaming at the animal to run or something like that would be. Now that doesn't mean that they can't disagree with you and express themselves. They can attack my lineage if they want in a conversation with me and call me names if they want. That's freedom of speech, that's not hunter harassment. They cannot, as I said, chase or haze bison during normal hunting hours. Hazing bison in the middle of the night is not hunter harassment. If you feel you're being subjected to hunter harassment, you know, one of the best things you can do is remove yourself from this situation. What we don't want to have is confrontation. One of the most important things I'd like to talk to you about today is hunter ethics. Now, as you've been told, I want to reaffirm that the eyes of the world could be on you on this hunt. It's going to be documented, it's going to be filmed, and we just don't want you to put yourself in a position where you or the sporting public is viewed poorly due to some unfortunate instances that we've seen in the past. Just remember that only you can control the outcome of this. You can decide how you act and how you respond to given situations. You can remove yourself from them like we talked about before. And you can make sure that you show this animal and this hunt and all the people around it the respect and dignity that it deserves. So good luck with your hunt and we'll see you out there. Enjoy yourself. If you need us, call us. You can call 1-800-TIPMON if you have any issues or problems. 
or your local sheriff's office. We get a lot of calls every year requesting information about where bison are out in the field. By law, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks can't give out that kind of information. Wardens will, however, be out in the field patrolling, enforcing the law, and responding to emergencies. Here are some important numbers for you to have when you go on your hunt. Please feel free to call me if you have any questions about this orientation or your bison hunt. Congratulations once again on getting a permit. Be safe and have a great bison hunt.